morning. Thank you. Good morning. <sighs> I appreciate you and all you've been sharing. They've been really helpful on my, my journey here. And you. Um, what you shared previously with her was also really helpful. Um, my question, I've been moving through some significant things with my health the last few years, and I really worked hard to really open into my heart, connect with my soul and making a lot of changes in my life and following my passion. And what I'm finding is I follow my passion, which is more advocacy for nature and um, um, working with nature lovers and all of that is my passion is also my greatest fear hmm. happening to nature. And so I'm feeling this interesting um, conflict, so to speak, or at least them merging where I'm noticing, I'm living my passion, I'm doing all these things. There's a lot of flow, a lot of opportunities showing up. And yet I can tell I'm still someone operating out of fear but it's also my, my love, my sole purpose. So um, I'm, I know I'm experiencing that. And I guess my question in relation to my health though, is there anything that I'm missing or not seeing um, that I need to be doing or, or a shift or change, whether it be in my relationship or relationships or where I'm living, that type of thing. I can feel my, my life is asking for a lot of, um, a lot more flow than maybe I'm allowing. <laughs> okay. Can, um, one more point of clarity. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the health challenge? What's, what's happening? It's a little bit of it. Yeah, I, there's something, um, I don't know if it's growing something on my, like a density on my sacrum and then, um, not sleeping and a few other aspects. So I can tell that a lot of it does have to do with, with fear. I know with the, the lower chakras and, and that, so primarily I can just tell my body is off and I've been doing a lot of mainstream things, but I just feel so clearly that I know that I can heal this with, you know, my own reawakening with my soul and trusting this more often okay um can you tell me your full name three times please <sighs> nicole gabrielle martel nicole gabrielle martel nicole gabrielle martel thank you Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> what I've shown was um, two major things, two, well, not major, but <laughs> major because they were two core things. So the lower chakras, the sacral and the root are the part of us that ground us into the physical, right? They're the part of the, the more they are open and flowing and the more our soul's energy is flowing through those chakras, the more we feel fear and we have a great experience of being physical. Now, most spiritual seekers are very good in these chakras up here, right? Because they meditate, we do all the things, we appreciate others, we give to others. And those are what the higher chakras usually open those. The lower chakras are very concerned with the self and trust. And this is the big, the thing that I was saying for you was these two elements of trust. And so I'm going to kind of go deeper for you because this is kind of what was shown for you. So the lower chakra specifically ground you into the experience on earth and trust, not just the trust of I'm safe here, but it 
you are grounded into the relationship with the earth and what's happening for you that is severing this a bit is your inability to trust that all is going to be well with earth right and so what's happening is the fear that you have is not grounding you here and it's also severing your relationship with this part so for you the biggest work again i'm going to give you the same mantra but to, yeah, to, right. yeah to give you the same mantras though even though i can't see how this is going to work out and here's another piece that i want to give you life doesn't just love you, it loves itself. And so all is going to be supported, all is going to go to given. And this is why you're here as well. Look at the beauty of your life and what you're doing. Literally, life sent itself you. And so if it can send some beautiful soul that has all this wisdom and all this power like you, it can handle it. It can, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. The other part of this is is another part of this is that's um, in the way of your trust is you are looking from your human eyes more than your soul eyes, and your soul has a broader perspective on things, and it can see things that you have no. There's no way that your human eyes can see. It can see how things are, are, are coming together. It can see different pathways to take. There's so much that your human eye, there's, there's no way. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how many tools you get. I don't care if you had 17,000 people looking with your eye. There's no way that any of us can ever see the bigness that the soul can see. It has a broadest view that we can never get through human eyes. And so the thing here is to step back more. As a matter of fact, what I want you to do is get into the mirror every morning and say, please help me see myself and see the world through the eyes of my soul. Today, Today, and, and keep it daily, keep it daily. Today, please help me see myself and see the world through the eyes of my soul. Please help me see more of how things are working out than how they are not. Yeah. And this is one thing I wanna, I wanna give you for this as well because a little bit of the science portion of it. There's something in the brain called the reticular activating system, RES for short. And what it's basically, um, its whole function is to keep your brain from being overloaded because there's so much information available for us at any given time. And the brain would literally overload and burn out and die if you didn't have the reticular activated system. So the reticular activating system takes all the information and condenses it down. Now they believe there's about 500 million to a billion bits of information available to us at any given point. Like right now, you talking to me over the computer, there's 500 million bits of information that's available. Your brain can only process 2000 bits. So you cannot even see what's actually here. This is actually scientifically factual. Us mystics and intuitives, we've been saying this forever, but now science is saying there's no way you, a person can actually see what's actually available and real in real time. They can only see 2,000 bits. What decides what 2,000 bits you get to see is your RES. And it goes, and what it, how it decides that is based upon what you believe and what you've primarily been focused on. And it collapses everything down to let you only see that, mm -hmm. right? And so the more you think about something, the more you talk about something, the more you believe something, the more it collapses and says this. So it's almost like looking at somebody's backyard through a hole in the fence and you see like just this little bit and you think that's the whole backyard. Yeah. 
And what if that fence gets taken out and you're like, whoa, all of this was available. All of this was in that backyard. They have a pool. I never saw the pool. I only saw this little bit of grass over there. This is kind of what's happening. Now you can shift your 2000 bits. So you can shift and look into another hole, right? And the hole that you want to shift into is all is well, things are working out. There is healing and thriving happening, right? And just another kind of example, quick example for how this works. It's very much like, so one, one of the things I used to do with some of my clients is I'll say, okay, pick a license plate you want to see, right? And so they'll say, well, maybe repeating numbers. I want to see repeating numbers, right? Now they hard, and it's one that you hardly ever see. So I don't hardly ever see a one, 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 one license plate. I'll say, okay, make an intention that you're going to focus and you're going to see this today. And what ends up happening the first day, they may struggle, but the second day they see it. And then once they see it, they see them everywhere. It's almost like everybody has one, right? It's because you've shifted your RAS. You shifted and the RAS says, oh, we're, we're wanting to see license plates like this. Great, here's the license plate. And that's all you begin to see too, right? So for you, what you've done is kind of collapsed it down to say, I see where the earth is hurting and things aren't working out. And that, but there's a whole other thing out there that's happening too. And you want to see that so that that influences your feeling of being safe here and trusting. So that opens up the chakra systems in the low, your lower chakra systems more. Because the other part of the lower chakra systems is trust, but it's also pleasure. It's also being happy. It's also being blissful. And when what's happening for you is yes, you're in your passions, but your fear is taking you out of the bliss of it. The deeper I, I do the advocacy work and I'm more in the trenches with it, the more I see kind of the dark side, so to speak, and then it's reactivating this fear and um, my need, focus. Yeah, you need more. And this is this is what has, uh, I've never not seen this be the case. So I've worked with many different activists and advocates across all the fields, right? And I've never seen this not be the case for advocates because you are um there's two things because yours is a is a giving out of your energy a lot and because your work also is usually focused on the issue that you want to get solved it often gets collapsed into the issue mm -hmm. instead of the solution yeah like pay more attention to the solution but the other part of this too is you need more you need more self-care because you are giving your energy out and I'm, this is also part of your health issue you are giving your energy out more almost like if if this is a cup your soul's energy and this is the liquid in the cup this is your the cup is your body the liquid is your soul's energy right your body needs it to be up here at the top at all times in order for it to be healthy Anytime you give out and you do this type of work, service work, you give from this cup. It kind of comes down. It's understandable. Any type of exchange where we're giving, we're giving of our energy outwards. But you just as much as this is coming out, you need to have something coming back in. And that is work. That is stuff where that just pleases you that just makes you feel good, that doesn't require any exertion from you. You need to receive and not just give, right? So you're giving, but you're not doing enough things that are just fun for you, are just relaxing for you, are just literally um, joyous for you that don't also require you to be doing something. <clears throat> So there's more of that that needs to happen. Like, and I would make a list of what some of those things are. Like for me, I like to swim. I like to go have lunch with my friends. I like writing. Um, I like watching silly, I have silly, there are some silly shows that just make me laugh. I like watching, they don't require me to think. I just like watching. So I make sure every day 
I do something at least 30 minutes that that charges me that does not require me to charge it in any type of way. So you need more of that. When you are experiencing a health challenge, the the actual way to heal is to act, those things need to be prioritized. So not just 30 minutes, it needs to be the majority of the day. And that's the shift, right? So that's the call is can we prioritize more things that feed us, feed the energy? And yes, my work feeds me, but it also requires me to feed it, right? More of the things that don't require me to feed it. Now, this may not be what happens for the rest of your life, right? You're going to find a balance. But while you are ill, you, the balance that you need is more of this. So that's all the things that I'm seeing in for you. And that's the key probably for you, but not probably. That is the key for you to begin your healing journey and to make a, a more profound shift than what you've experienced before. Trust, um, pleasure and bliss, prioritizing, and then understanding that um, the earth is going to be she will be well, uh, just like you will be well, and you are receiving with support, and you can receive what you need. And there are people offering help in the majority of ways to you. Same for her. Shift the focus. Yep. And um, also, she is a part of you. So this is another aspect I'll leave with this. This is for all of us to understand. We're not separate. And not just in this esoteric, but in a very real way. The earth is a part of you, just like you are a part of me. We have this experience of, of illusion of separation, but actuality, we are one. So the more you take care of yourself and the more you begin to experience wellness and the more you begin to see things working out for you, the more you will begin to see that mirrored out because she is a mirrored reflection of you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And I think I've had it switched where I'm doing more of my work or doing more work for her than for me, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you do the reverse, you'll not only see it, but she'll thank you for it in a very tangible way. Thank you so much. Much, much, much love.